our first uh, guest is, a, is uh, in a sense, a dear, uh, a dear friend to the Agile People movement and uh, starting to become quite a rock star within the movement, uh, to be honest. Um, he's built a nursing company from four people to 9,000 people in less than eight years, as I said before, uh, which is uh, quite uh, an astonishing uh, performance. Uh, in that, he's become uh, creating Birdsorg uh, in Holland has sort of made him a, to, into a change maker in the healthcare industry. And we're really happy to have him here because when he's not here and doing this, he's out in the world talking to governments and talking to healthcare bodies and different industries uh, about how to build organizations in a completely new way. Jostelbock, very happy to have you here. Welcome up. We can, wh wh while working? that is happening, um, is it working? Yeah, yeah. It, it, Thanks for Mücke for your just free heat. Oh, there we go. Yes, very yes, nice. Yes, I was. Big hand for that. I was here um, in 1977, and I had a, a girlfriend in Stockholm. All right. <laughs> but it uh, didn't work out. So these are the only words I know in Swedish. Okay, but that's not too bad. No, uh, I, I, I imagine. I wanted, I wanted to impress her mother. <laughs> Good. That don't work out either. No. Thank <laughs> you. She, she still recognized me. I, I, um, oh, that's too bad. I went back um, uh, eight years ago or ten years ago, okay. and I was standing for the front door, and she still recognized me. Okay, so there we go. So well, I made I well. made impression. Okay, very good. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, we'll hope you make an impression today as well. Uh, it's because uh, uh, what I didn't mention in the beginning was that you're also a nurse by education and a background. You've, uh, you've been in sort of management positions within this industry yeah. quite a bit. How, I with that context, context, how does it feel? Uh, sort of going into different parts of the world, seeing the, the, the practices you've developed actually coming to life because you've expanded to actually Sweden, the US and, and, and yeah. elsewhere. How does it feel? Uh, I, I think for a nurse, it feels quite normal because you, I think uh, there is a big underestimation about nurses. So as nurses become uh, in everyone's houses, um, worked as a district nurse and you worked with professors and with all kind of people and you know what uh, when people are at the end of life it's a privilege to get to learn them and to n to learn about their lives and so i think a, a lot of nurses know a lot about what's happening in the world and they use it in their daily practice so and that's what i try to do just as a nurse but on a higher level try to to tell people how you can organize or you can do the things in a different way and and I mean, I also mentioned that when you're not here, you're and you'll be traveling just after today somewhere in the world, I think. Um, what do the sort of the government and industry bodies and healthcare bodies tell you when they when they call? We need to call Joss. We'll, we'll call Joss. And what do they? What do they say? But they say um, they they learned about us. They say, oh, you have grown so fast in Holland, and we, we know Holland is a, a good example of good healthcare. So if you're good in Holland, then it probably will be good for us as a country. Um, so, and, and they're all struggling with their own complexity. So they're all built very complicated systems. So they're struggling with the cost development, with the demographics um, and with the, the workforce. So I said, all these three themes um, uh, can be solved with one solution. So that's <laughs> Not, not really. One course. simple solution. One you, simple you'll be solution. talking more about that. So I'm, I'm going to steal yeah. your time. Uh, I'll leave the stage to you. And, and humanity above uh, bureaucracy, uh, sort of before we start, on a scale from one to ten, how far are we in, 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 oh, in creating that? I think it, that? it depends on from which side you look at, of, uh, at it. I think from uh, an individual person life, I think we are at uh, seven or eight. But from the institutional level or the system level, we are in a three so we a need weak to three or a strong three <laughs> um a three, a three. <laughs> okay awesome uh just take yeah? it away okay thank you thank you i think you'll get that one i take some water first that's a good idea i was i was here um around one o'clock last night and there was only one one beer in the refrigerator <laughs> and it was non-alcoholic I saw it this morning. I thought, I. Uh, good. Um, 
as Tommy said, I'm, I'm a nurse, uh, but before that I studied economics. Um, so I should have become uh, an economist, a famous economist, I always say. Um, I, I recently met my, um, the one who uh, wrote the books at the secondary school. He's now 84 and he phoned me and he said, I read about you and uh, I think you're the only one in Holland who understands my economics. And he said, how, how can I support you? Because everyone in Holland should be able to have the health care from Bootsorg. So now we're working together. So and I thank him for his beautiful books. Um, I worked f as, uh, for, for 15 years as a, as a nurse. So I quit my study economics after two years because I didn't like the world of, of money, uh, as I can say. And, and I started to work in the hospital. And I think it, uh, for me, it, it, it was very easy to have um, a meaningful job because if you're dealing with patients, it's very easy to get connected, to give them uh, a new perspective, to support them in what they're able to. So, so for me, it was a, a profession which fits me very well. Uh, but in the 90s, when I worked as a district nurse, the Dutch government decided to change the whole system and uh, uh, that gave a lot of people a lot of trouble. So I will tell m something more about it. But from my secondary school, I had some trouble with hierarchical systems. So I was always sent out of class. I had a lot of punishment and I was dis discharged from school several times. Um, and it was, uh, uh, there was um, written a book a few months ago by a Belgium guy, who it's called Authority. And he's, he shows that uh, since the 50s, um, we exchanged authority for power. So we built power organizations with where power, people have power on others. And, and that's what I felt, I think, when I was 15, 16, that I don't have a problem with authority, but I have a problem with when people have, want to have power on others. So these ideas were uh, as a red thread through my life. And I tried to look at it in the organization I worked for. Uh, after 15 years as a nurse, I worked for 10 years as a director uh, in two big home care organizations. I was director of innovations and medical services. So I've seen a lot of different roles and also the discussions in the management team. I, when I still was a nurse, I thought these people have all kind of uh, important thoughts about what they're doing, but I was quite disappointed when I became a manager director. Uh, in 2006, together with some friends, uh, we started to think about a new, a new organizational model, a new deli deli healthcare delivery model. Um, also, my, my wife is involved and some friends, an IT specialist, and we said uh, we can create an organization based on self-organizing teams with support of IT. That was the idea. And we started uh, in 2007 with one team for nurses. I started to work again myself as a nurse. Uh, I still had the skills, so that was quite um, a pleasure for the patients. Um, so, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, but I did the evening shifts and the weekend shifts to, to, to reduce costs. Um, we uh, uh, were delivering community health care. So we said we, we need to go back to the community. So the home care organizations were more and more delivering tasks instead of delivering solutions. And when I was educated as a district nurse, the focus was on delivering solutions and working together with the community. And that's quite a big difference. For the people who work in healthcare, um, I, th I think you probably know. And for who you are not working in healthcare, I will explain later more. Um, we were also working together with GPs because the GPs, the, the family doctors in Holland, they lost their district nurses because of all the changes in the healthcare. Um, and also we, we connected again with volunteers and with a lot of other professionals. And uh, at this moment we have 9,700 nurses. So it's growing every month with around 150 to 200 nurses. So we, around Christmas, we expect 10, the 10,000 10, nurses. And, and next year, we have the, our 10th uh, uh, year anniversary. So then we have 10,000 nurses 
and then we hope to go, grow to, to 100,000 patients and 1,000 locations. That would be nice. Eh? That, and, then, and then we will celebrate it on 10 locations. So that's, so that's um, a little bit uh, symbolic. We have uh, 45 staff at the, at the back office. So we have uh, one uh, central office in, in the east of the country. And there are, for example, six people working at uh, finance. We don't have a CFO. So it's, uh, we have a turnover of 300 million euro, and I'm, I'm doing the CFO work for one hour per week because it's only calculating. So, and plus and min, it's not so difficult because I studied two years economics. So that's, um, so we're dealing now for 70,000 patients a year, uh, every year growing with 10,000 uh, and at the moment around 60% uh, of all the district nurses in Holland are working for Buitzorg. So, and there are 650 different home care providers in Holland. So, so we're um, spread it all over the country. Uh, there were uh, several reasons to uh, start this. Um, and my main focus was that what we were doing in healthcare was not good for patients, not for elderly. So it was uh, elderly got um, a lot of people at their houses delivering tasks and sometimes it could be 40, 50 people at one month coming at a, at a person's house. So when, when your, your partner of your family member has, has dementia, it's terrible that you have all the time, you have to explain uh, what, what the patterns are of, of your daily life and uh, how the, the care is as, as much effective. Uh, the, the, the idea of the government in the, in the, at the end of the 80s was that when we uh, create more market incentives uh, and when we create bigger home care, professional home care organizations, um, the costs will uh, decrease and the quality will increase. But the opposite happened. So the quality went down and the costs almost doubled in 10 years. Um, because of this growth, and because all the organizations were delivering hours, which, un which were not always um, needed. Um, but because of this growth, we got also capacity problems to the, due to the demographic developments. And of course, you, as Sweden, you are ahead eh, in the demographic development. So we need to learn from you and from Japan as the two most, uh, the, the, the countries with, with the highest uh, elderly population and at the same time we didn't have any knowledge or information about the outcome so we we spent a lot of billions of euros and we didn't know did we do we solve any problems with that we only know how many hours care delivered so that was for me i think um, we need to learn from what we are doing every day so to become better nurses so that was for me and and an, um, something that should be very normal, but it wasn't there. So that, that was some, some reasons to start something. And in 2007, as I said, we started with four nurses and the ideas were quite simple. I didn't know about Agile. So uh, I, I had some ideas about how to organize based on the primary process. So I said, um, taking care for patients, it's a, it's a routine thing. So when someone calls you, uh, need support, then you go see what's to be, what has to be done and together with some colleagues you decide on how you are going to schedule it. This is, this is the daily work of a, of a district nurse. So and then it's every day again, new patients and then when patients don't need help anymore, uh, you just withdraw yourself. This, this process is a, ve is a very simple process, but it's made very complicated in a lot of organizations because there is uh, someone for the call center, for example, there is someone for the scheduling, there is someone for uh, 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 managing the different tasks and so on. So my idea was if you just um, create an environment where nurses can do all these things themselves, it would be much better. Um, they will have much more fun and it will reduce costs. So they're uh, responsible for the assessments, for the scheduling, for the education. Uh, they decide on their own education. They decide on their own colleagues. So they have, uh, they hire their own colleagues. And, and when you hire your own colleagues, you try to find the best ones. 
and if you've got some colleagues uh, who are hired by another, then you have to find out if he's good. And if he's not good, you can have a lot of trouble with it. Um, so they are also responsible for finance. So a yeah, lot of people think that nurses can't be responsible for finance. And I think uh, y um, nurses are very wise and they can, the decisions they make at home, uh, they, they easily can make at their work too. So, so the idea is to just use your common sense you have, you use at home also at your work. Uh, they do all kinds of coordination activities and we integrate uh, nursing, medical and social care. So if you have a, a very um, patient-centered focus, then you should integrate as much as possible activities because then you, you try to go with the life of people and then you can deliver the best possible support. So that's, and if you split it up, then you just do a little part of someone and all these little parts never come together. So then it's very difficult to have a complete picture on the, on the client, on the patient. That is what, how we uh, perceive our, um, how we show our vision. Um, instead of making people depending on care, you should focus on independence. So you should empower people. And it's more about training skills, counseling skills, coaching skills. So delivering tasks and um, learning people how to deal with their handicaps, impairments, it's quite a, a different thing. But in Holland, we got paid for the hours care delivered. So if you, if you uh, prevent someone for needing care, then you don't get paid. So we built very ridiculous systems. So that's what I say to you to our minister said if you don't change the system it's obvious that you will get more and more hours so you have to focus on outcome you have to uh, if you could pay for good results then you get good results so it's I think not so difficult but we do it quite different in all the systems we have so we called it the onion model and yesterday I heard that the onion in Holland is the most exported article so what a coincidence. Um, yes, I'm, um, t tomorrow I'm going to Taiwan, so I'm going to export the onion model to Taiwan. Uh, yes, and um, I will see how much onions we have there in Taiwan. Um, Bitsa works inside out. We work together with the community. So you have to have connections with everyone in the community. And for doing that, you need autonomy. So you have to decide yourself on what kind of connections are useful. So you work together with volunteers, with the physiotherapist, uh, with the pharmacist, and so on. And when you're doing that for quite a long time on a small scale, for five to 10,000 inhabitants, then you know everybody and everybody knows you. So that's as simple as it is. And when you know each other, then you will connect and you will use each other for uh, creating solutions for what you meet in your daily practice. Um, it's all based on, on uh, the principles of self-organization. Um, but I say the most important thing is trust. So we, uh, the way we organize and the way we have all these control cycles and so on is, in my opinion, based on, on this trust. So, and I don't know any nurse who are, is not doing her work uh, properly. Of course, we have some nurses with problems, and sometimes with financial problems. You can't always... Um, and be sure that uh, everything is going well. But if 95% if is going well, why should you focus on the 5%? It's better to focus on the 95%. So we say, let's trust the nurses, uh, give them uh, the optimal autonomy and try to avoid hierarchy. So if, uh, I don't know how it works out with you here, but if someone's telling you what to do, what's your, what's your response? Uh, at home, for example. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think that we should, we should try to avoid telling people, other people how to do what they need to do. So, and the other thing that you can say is, is just ask, if, if you have a problem, I'm here for you and you can ask me. That's another way of dealing with things. Um, to avoid complexity, because in the outside world, we have a lot of complexity in our system world. Uh, all the policy rules um, which are developed from, from the government or from insurers or whatever, they create a lot of bureaucracy 
And what we said is we start an IT company which tries to get rid of all this bureaucracy. So we integrate all the, all the bureaucracy in the IT so that the outside world is satisfied about what they get, the information they want, but we don't bother the nurses by it. So that was, and, and, and I think, a good idea. Um, we said, okay, if nurses are working in a team with a maximum of 12, they can oversee everything. And we will not have uh, dominant people getting uh, the role of a leader. Um, they take care for 40 to 50 patients at one time. They're generalists taking care for all types of patients, terminally ill patients, people who are discharged from hospital, people with dementia. So as, and when you work as a generalist, you learn every day. So uh, from the different things you do, so I'm, I'm, I'm not a very big fan of specialists. Specialists are focusing more and more on one thing, and then they learn not so fast as generalists, is my opinion. Um, we have um, uh, higher educated nurses than the average home care organization. So in Holland, we have 70% registered nurses, and from the total amount of nurses, 40% has a bachelor degree. Uh, the average home care organization in Holland has around 15 to 20% uh, nurses. They are responsible for their own education. So we just say 3% of the budget is, can be spent on, on uh, education, but decide yourself what kind of education you need. And also organize it yourself if you like. So some, some of them do, for example, the medical technical things with the hospital uh, in, the, in the region they're working. So they have, at the same time, they have close connections with this hospital. We say that informal networks are much more important than formal organizational structures. So we try to avoid contracts. So we say just do what all the connection based on your motivation, on your intrinsic motivation and what's useful for your daily work. But don't spend too much time on, on meetings you don't think are very useful. So try to avoid uh, um, useless meetings. I, I, and that's an advice for everyone, of course try to avoid useless meetings, it's not. But we do a lot of useless meetings, do you know? We, we, we schedule meetings and we don't know yet what we want to solve with it. But it's just a, a monthly meeting or a, so we try to avoid that. Then we give them uh, support at the start. Um, when a team starts, it, it starts very natural. Uh, normally there are four or five nurses who say, okay, we heard about it. Can we start something here in our neighborhood? And then uh, we ask them, right, uh, make some short an an analysis of what, what, why you think it should be useful to have a team here. And then they make a, a demographic analysis and they say, we have these networks, we have these relations with the family doctors and we think that would be very useful. And then we say, okay, then we hire you and then start and then within a few months there running. So that's the, usually the, the process. Uh, the coach, we have coaches, 15 coaches, and the coaches are involved in this first period. They support the teams when it's needed. But sometimes the teams don't need support, so then they don't do it. Uh, this is one of our teams. Uh, they seem quite happy. That's one of our patients. He's now, he's now 105, so still quite to living in Rotterdam. Uh, these are the different types of, of clients we are uh, uh, taking care of. And the idea is that uh, we need to build an infrastructure in the community where every patient can be taken care of at home. So, and the, the idea is when you th think for the coming 10 years, we have in most hospitals, we have 40 to 50 per percent of the patients don't really need to be there. If the infrastructure in the community uh, is, is, is good enough, then we can avoid people to go to hospitals. For, for example, people with dementia, uh, they get, usually they get worse uh, when they get out of hospital than they get in. So you, ha you need to avoid people to get in the ho hospital when it's, there is not an acute reason. That's my, my opinion. So, uh, so the, the idea is for the future, build communities where you have an infrastructure where all these uh, patients can be supported. Uh, I usually get a lot of questions about HR and quality. And I said, we, we try to avoid uh, to have HR and quality systems. So I don't know who from you has an HR role, but um, yesterday I had a meeting with um, 
Some people from a very big organization in Holland, they're doing the social security, and they have 20,000 people working, and they have six, 600 people at HR. So, and they came to ask me advice, because uh, uh, we became the best employer of Holland, so they said, we also want to become the best employer of Holland. So and then I said, I, I know where to start. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, it's, uh, and, and then I'm going to have um, a, a, a speech next week, uh, Thursday, because they want to, um, to tell me about how can you create an environment where people have fun at their work. And I said, you are the institute who are the most, the biggest obstacle for us to have fun at our work. They have having these very difficult procedures. So, but, okay, it's another, another, another lecture. Uh, but we, as, a, as quality, we said we want to focus on outcome uh, and we want to trust on the education level and we measure the satisfaction, the client satisfaction. And from the start, we had the highest cli client satisfaction. Um, and we introduced the Omaha system, that's a classification system where, we, where you can show outcome. And the Dutch Minister of Health decided to make it a standard for the whole of the country. So it took six years of discussion with the health insurers and with the ministry, but now we created a standard and it's, it's, it's much more um, supporting the nurses as the other old systems. As I said, we have uh, 45 people at, at the back office and 50 coaches and no managers. So it's not really true. My wife and me, we are something like a manager because I started together with my wife. Uh, but it's um, like I think most of you um, in the morning, six o'clock, she's awake and then she tells me what I've forgotten and what I need to do. That's our management team. So that's, uh, but we never, we never have management team meetings. So it's, I never write strategic notes anymore, policy notes or whatever. So because it's not necessary. So if you just don't do it anymore, you don't miss it. It's really just, just try it. It's with a lot of things. You are used to do it, but in the organization, just, just wait and see. Just don't do it for some months and you see that nobody's asking for it. Um, no, people are happy that they're not troubled by it. So if you make, if you create plans, I, I, I was uh, in my other jobs, I was number one in creating plans. So I was uh, every time I had several plans at one time. Um, and I had the idea at that moment that I was doing useful things. If I look back now, I think, oh, I, I bothered so many people with all these silly plans of me. So I wrote them all excuse letters. Um, but uh, but uh, what we do at the head of this is try to, to get rid of all the bureaucracy. So um, all the administration should should not be uh, an, an, a problem for the for the nurses. They should focus on what they want to do is taking care for patients and working together in these beautiful teams. Um, we had an, a quite an, an important thing was was the the IT because. We didn't have the software to, su to support it in Holland. We, we looked everywhere and we said, no, we are not satisfied about how to support it. So we, we started our own IT company with some friends. And now we're supporting a lot of other companies in Holland. And now we're creating an international company to uh, support people in Japan and other countries in the world. Um, f three, four years ago, we st also started in Sweden. Mona and John are here, and Mona will also take care of, will take place tomorrow in the workshop. So if you want to know more about how it goes in Sweden, just ask for Mona. Um, it was quite a struggle, <laughs> I can say. Um, if you look at what you can achieve at the IT, is that you can reduce cost in every place. So, and you can share knowledge in, in, in a different way. So the idea was, Facebook was growing very fast at that moment, 2006, 2007. So we said we're going to make our own Facebook. Everyone can share their ideas and information and knowledge. And on a horizontal way, uh, things go much faster than you go all these things uh, f vertical. So we, we created this IT system and now we are in a stage that we, uh, we are involving the, the clients to take part of the in the community. So they, the, 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 the idea is that at the end, the clients have to be in control. We, in healthcare, you very easily take over control of patients. So when, when you have been in hospital, you know that it's, 
uh, when you're waiting for a doctor, then uh, he's, he's easily taking over from you. So that's we we try to avoid. Um, what you see is that, it, and it was very surprising. Uh, I was since 2007, 2008. I'm writing blogs every few weeks. I write my ideas, and then we get a lot of comments from the teams. And then, when the comments are going in a certain direction, we just say, "Okay, let's make it our new policy." So that's, and it's much more easy than to think uh, myself about what sh what should I do. So now that's the reason that I'm so much away that they don't need me anymore in Holland. And I can do it everywhere I am. So I can just write my blog uh, also in Taiwan. Um, all the documents, we have an e-learning environment uh, are on, on this web. And it also creates something like shared values. So these teams are very focusing on a, on a neighborhood, on, 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 on their own team. Uh, and what he says, okay, if, if you know that there are other teams, all over the country, um, and you can learn from them, you can uh, consult them. We have experts in different places on different diseases. Um, so, And there is a very easy communication also with the back office by using this uh, community. Um, if you look at the, the feeling of the nurses, they, they feel that they're working in a small own organization. So they don't see these 10,000 nurses, they just only see then seven, eight, nine colleagues. And that creates an ownership, uh, which is, I think, amazing to see because they're very proud of what they achieved in their own neighborhood. From the start, we are um, one of the most fast growing organizations in Holland. We're all over the country now. And I think the coming years, we will double the amount of teams because they're splitting up all the time. So when they grow, to nine or 10 or 11, then they say, okay, the coordination is becoming a little bit more difficult. So perhaps we should split up and we go on in two different teams in two smaller neighborhoods. So it's a very organic way of growing. Um, and it's, it, we don't have a target. So we don't say we, we need to have this, but we say when it's, when it's needed, when people think it's good to have this, then it will grow by itself. And everyone who wants to work this way is very welcome. So that's the reason that we have 400 uh, people who apply for a job every month. Uh, there, uh, there are some books uh, yet, um, and, and I think it's very interesting to see how the <coughs> agile thinking developed and how we see now that things come together and all over the world. You see it everywhere that people are struggling with the current systems. Uh, Frédéric Laloux, I think a lot of you will know his book, Reinventing Organizations. Um, even my son is reading it. Yes, he also be becomes a nurse, it's a third year. And it's terrible what he learns at school, really. Half is about management. And, and you said we will need management, but that's one of my um, uh, criticisms. I, I, I don't think we, we need management, we need, we need organizational talents. So, and, if you translate it into management, then you reduce, I think, the possibilities. So I think we can use management theories. Okay. Um, this Frederick talks about uh, self-management holders and evolutionary purpose, and I, I really can support him in any way. He was the first one, I think four years ago, five years ago, when he visited us, when I thought he's really understanding what we are doing. Because usually people only reflect on what they see. So they see these teams, so they think, oh, it's a structured thing. Uh, oh, it's a different way to organize HR. Or it's, but, then, but he, saw, I think, saw the real difference. And Shada Nandram, she wrote a book, it's called um, Organizational Innovation by Integrating Simplification. And she developed the Integrating Simplification Theory. And it's, I think it's a very uh, nice book because she, she, she uh, made connections between the old Indian philosophies and the day today. So I see um, uh, she defined the three principles, the needing principle, so do what's needed and don't do what's not needed. So we do a lot of things which are not needed and if you don't do them anymore, it saves you a lot of time. Then the rethinking principle, try to reflect on what you're doing every day with your colleagues 
major family and try to think, uh, am, am I doing the best possible things? And the common sense principle, just use your common sense in what you do. And if you, we, we say in, in, within Bootsock, if, if you think something is silly, don't do it. Don't do it because there is just a bureaucratic rule for someone. Let's discuss the rule and let's go to protest against the rule. So that's what we did. We, like the inspection, we invited the inspection because they have a lot of rules which are not uh, improving healthcare, but they're just rules taught from behind the desk or something. So then we said to come and see how it works. And if you have some advice, please let us know. But now they're learning from us and they're changing the, the rules, uh, which are more supportive to our way of working. This is another team in one of our islands. Um, then about the uh, employees, how, how they perceive it. We, we had a lot, a lot of comp uh, competition in Holland. We, as I said, we have 650 providers. And a lot of these CEOs, the providers said, the way Bootsor is working leads to a lot of pressure on these nurses. They have to decide everything themselves. They are accountable for everything. So it's, it's back to the, the middle ages for these nurses. So that was the reason that we said, let's start uh, participating in the best employers research, because our idea was, of course, that the nurses liked the, the way of working. And since 2011, we became the best employer of Holland. Only 2013, we came second after KLM. I'm sorry. But, um, but now you know how it is with KLM, with Air France. Not going very well. <laughs> so, I'm sorry. I like KLM. Um, so, it, but it's, it's, we have an 8.7, and the, s the second on the list has an 8.0, and we have a, a 9.2 on engagement, and that's the high, highest figure uh, ever measured. Um, and it's quite simple because the ownership of the teams. It, it's, it's quite logic that they feel engaged, I think. So we, we don't use it in, in improving things or something. We just, uh, but there's one critical thing in it, and it's about the work-life balance. So uh, we pay, um, at the end of the year, we pay an extra bonus. Uh, and it's, it's really uh, meant for the, for the partners of the nurses. So we said you should go on an extra holiday or something, because it's, it's taking a lot from your family. So, and so I got a lot of pictures when they're going to Portugal or Spain from the partners. Thank you for the holiday. Uh, this is another team in the north of the country. Then uh, about the, the, the clients, of course, the focus all the time is talk about the purpose where we are there for, talk about the clients. Um, compared with the other organizations in Holland, we did some research from 2009, but every year there is a, a, re, a research. We have 9.1. We are supported by patient and elderly organizations. We work very closely together with them, also with the union. So we say, um, because we got questions. What's the sign? Oh, it, I thought it was a sign for me. Oh, okay. You were just waving. Friendly people, these Swedish. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> yes, I think it will be different in Taiwan. Um, <laughs> as I have to speak at the Chiang Kai Chek um, building. Okay, some history. Um, and there are less uh, admissions and readmissions in hospitals and nursing homes. So we, we are trying to focus on more research on that because it's, I think it's very important to uh, show that the costs of the, the care uh, goes down by working this way and the quality goes up. Then we have uh, very nice innovations. This is an, an example in, uh, from Amsterdam. It's called radio stockings. So it's, it's about the, you know, the pressure stockings when you get elder. Um, and and this, this nurse, she said we, she was a former journalist before she became a nurse. And she said we can reach out to much more people if we have a radio program. So that's what she started in Amsterdam every week. She had this radio program and she invited mayor and she invited specialists and other people to talk about the life in Amsterdam. And now other cities are taking over. So they're making their own um, radio program together with, with nurses. 
um, th another another thing, um, and I, I can advise you to look at it at home or something. You, you will you will get the slides. It's about a walker race, and it's uh, about one of the nurses who these, uh, had this patient. She was 85, and she said, "There are competitions for everybody, but not for us elderly behind a walker." And then she said, and it was 2010, and then she said, "Let's organize this." Let's, and then she went to the city hall and to the health insurance, she got 10,000 euro. And in 2010, on a Saturday morning, I was reading the newspaper, there was this big picture with two old ladies behind a walker. And it, it said underneath, it is organized by Buitzorg. And I didn't know. So I, I, I could remember that I had some emails from Amsterdam. And I always say, oh, very good, just go on and so on. So I phoned her and said, oh, that's great, how can we learn from it? And then she put it on the web. And at the moment, there were competitions all over the country. And we had, in September, we had a Rolympiade in the, Olympi <laughs> in the Olympic Stadium in Amsterdam. So there were buses with uh, hundreds of people coming to Amsterdam in the Olympic Stadium. And they really trained for 400 meters, 800 meters, 1200 meters. Uh, and they got a medal. Uh, and they were, they were there together with families. And just imagine what happens, what the difference is when you focus on the abilities of people instead of the disabilities. When people are just sitting behind their uh, screen at home and waiting to have some contact or going out and meeting other people in an, a very enjoyable um, environment. So that's, that's uh, quite becomes a symbol um, we want also to connect with other Olympic stadiums, so I'm now talking with people in Tokyo to start something the same there. And we are also working in Seoul and Korea, and we try to start, say, okay, if you really want to involve elderly in the daily participation, you should do other things. So, and it needs, leads to another profession and another way of organizing. So all these things um, comes, comes together. This, this is creating meaningful relations between people. And when you create meaningful relations, you will get other results. It's much happier lives, I think. Um, if you look at the costs for the organization, we reduce the overhead costs by organizing this way. We have only 8% overhead costs, so we can s spend the money on care innovation. Uh, Buitzog is a non-for-profit organization, so we have profit, but we, we spend it on uh, most of it on innovation and on having some financially uh, reserve for um, some, th some things which can happen in the future. Because we have struggled from the start with the payment system, they didn't pay always what we, do, we are doing. So in 2013, we didn't get paid 9 million euro, the health insurance. So now they pay everything because they were a little afraid that people were not going to insure anymore with these health insurers. And now at the moment, we are creating our own health insurer. So that will be the next step. They're already nervous, uh, the other ones. Um, the sickness rate is 4%. We try to reduce it. It's lower than average, but we think we should go to 2%. So I asked everyone, what can we do to become the most healthy organization of Holland? So, and then we got a lot of ideas about uh, mindfulness, about massage at work about um, what kind of things, uh, yeah, more holiday days also. So we have to see what works and not. Um, then if you look at the cost benefits for the care, what, what we wanted to show was when you work this way, it reduces the hours of care. So what, what we've shown is that we did uh, research with uh, Ernst & Young and KPMG, and we saw that we deliver 35% less hours than the average in Holland. So that the clients and the employees are very satisfied. So, uh, and in the process, we had a lot of discussions with a lot of stakeholders. So uh, one of the most important one was the, in 2007, the minister, the minister of health. And she was really touched by talking with the nurses, how they perceived the difference in how they worked before and how they're working now. Um, and then, I think uh, we worked together quite closely. Uh, she asked me to come to The Hague and to talk with her people at the ministry. What can we do? What can we change? And at the moment, uh, the, all the, the payment system, 
the regulations are changed in a way that it's supporting our way of working. So it's the district nurse is number one on the agenda. Last week there was a big debate in the parliament and it was all about district nursing and how district nursing can contribute to improving healthcare. So that's, I think, what we achieved. And what we see is that a lot of other organizations are also interested in the model. So I have banks. Uh, banks have a lot to do, I think. Uh, except for Handelsbanken. Eh? This, I think that's a very important difference. They could learn from Handelsbanken too. Uh, but there are hotel chains, there are schools, uh, police. Uh, in every field you see that they're trying to find new ways of organizing network, network, creating networks and try to avoid all the hierarchical structures. This is what we want to achieve. We, 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 if you look at the demographics, we need to attract more younger people in healthcare. So, uh, and I'm not for the innovation part. I, 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 I think that we have so much wisdom in the organizations. Uh, people who, uh, women who have, because 97% of the people are working for us are women, they have so much wisdom about how to deal with daily things and how to organize, how to develop strategies which are working in their community. So we should use their wisdom and we should attract young nurses to come in to work in, in healthcare because we need them uh, when we are depending on the healthcare system. So this is what I wanted to share with you and I'm looking forward to the discussion. Thank you. All right, so uh, from four people to Rolympics, insurance company, IT company, and, and what have we next? What have we next? Oh, I, I um, didn't mention yet the uh, different other parts we developing. Uh, we have a mental health care part, so uh, focusing on, on mental problems, um, youth, youth care, uh, hospices, um, maternity care, and we have also domestic care. So it's a focus on cleaning houses and uh, supporting people in their daily activities. So it's, and they all have their own development. So we'll see what comes out of it. And, and it's, we'll open up for questions and, and, and then we'll have a, a, a mingle break. But, but before that, I mean, there, there's so many things popping when, when, when listening to you. And, and one thing, obviously, is from, from everything that you guys have done, what is sort of the things that are easy to, relatively easy to extract and apply to if I'm in the steel industry? What can I, or I'm in the auditing business or I'm a bank for that matter. What are I sort of some of the I things? I think uh, when, when you start with the, um, the product or the service you are delivering and you say, okay, what's, what's the logic in this process? And you take that as a most important uh, principle for organizing, it can be adapted everywhere, in my opinion. And, and it's not so, it, you should try to get the complexity out of your head. Right, so that's which one is perfectly easy, right? I mean, Monday morning, let's after the <laughs> weekly meeting. Um, it, no, but it's, it's, where do you start then? Because I, I, I imagine in Sweden we have um, obviously a lot of uh, public healthcare organizations. Yeah. Then we have a number of uh, private healthcare organizations that are either privately owned or venture capital or, w or what have you. I mean, how easy would it be to just go to one of the big ones and say, guess what, we'll, we'll just flip this around and we'll do it this way instead. Uh, oh, we, we did several of, of these transformations in Holland. So I have some, some friends um, who are CEOs of, of bigger organizations, home care organizations. Usually they are women, because women understand more easily what it is about. So, uh, excuse me, <laughs> gentlemen. But uh, uh, it's more, it's, it's part, it's intuitive. Uh, and, and one of these organizations, um, they, we just separated a, a small part of the organization, disconnected it from the rest, from the managers and from the back office. And we said, no, nobody can interfere. We just ask them to do what they want to do. And within a few months, it were this, it, we had the same results as what we were doing. So, and then these teams were somehow advertising to the other teams and then within two years, they made a complete transformation. 
And the most important thing was that what I said to the CEO, which was also a, a friend of mine, uh, I said, you have to be very consistent. So you should not make any compromise. If you, if you mix two paradigms together, then it won't work. So if you, but if you w really think that is a better way to organize, just start a discussion with everyone, explain what you want to achieve and how it works and why. And, and, just, and we made a lot of trips. They, they came and see uh, how, how we did it. And, and the awareness grew and grew. And now they are um, on one of the best performing organizations in Holland. So that's, and, and now they become a role model and an example for other organizations to make the same shift. Okay, so it's really about daring to think that you can do something different yeah. or a different model, and then going into the, the very hardcore logic of the business and start to turning, turning stones. No, if you have to, in your head, you have to imagine how it can, how, how it looks like when you have made the change. Okay. So in, those, in that three-step process, so turning the stones is the last one in oh, the I case. I never think in a linear process. Oh, of course. Sorry. Yeah, my bad. <coughs> I work in, in a consulting profession. Um, okay, anyway, uh, you go to v Vietnam or Taiwan? No, Taiwan, Taiwan and, Chi sorry, and China. Yeah. Where, where do you, because uh, you, you, you're scanning the world maybe at least more uh, in this topic than I do, wh where can we turn, where are we relatively better in doing this? Is sort of Holland the golden star in the in the world where you have all these uh, best examples, or where in no, the world? I, I think um, everywhere I come, people recognize these things. So this this wisdom is everywhere. So you should just use what's there, and then uh, connect with people who are um, supporting the change. Um, but the, like we work now together with for five years with a lot of people in Japan. But uh, the Japanese people are doing it themselves. They just uh, visit us and we do some training. But the paradigm shift uh, ha is happening in their heads. And they find out how they can deal with it in their history, in their system. Uh, and then something beautiful happens. So, so Which it's is extra fascinating because Japan is not necessarily the most agile and self-managed culture oh, in a sense. Wait. Oh, wait. Yeah. Maybe After they will. 10 years. <laughs> All right. Let's, um, I, I have more questions, but let's invite the audience and, and see what's, what's cooking. Um, and we have uh, microphones if we, if we need. Here's a question in the middle of the middle. Can you hear me? Yes, it's fascinating to hear what you have achieved, but have you ever failed? Have you ever failed with teams? And uh, if you have, do you know why it hasn't worked out? Yes, I think in total we have had uh, two or three teams which did, who didn't succeed. And it was, um, I think, um, for two of these teams, it was a wrong estimation um, if they were, would really be accepted. So when in Holland, it's when you don't have a good connection with the family doctors, it's becoming difficult to get the referrals. So in, um, in some places, then the team stays very small. So then you have three, four people, and then you have delivered 24 hour day care. So you have to be available also at night. And the pressure on a small group is too big. So then we say, just try it. We can try it for some months. Uh, but if it's not working, then we divide the nurses on different teams or we ask them to find out if they will. But it's only two, three times happened up till now. Usually uh, some of the teams have some struggles in time, but it's part of the process. And how to deal with it is, makes them learn how, yeah, how to deal with difficult periods. Okay. Or questions in the back. So here we go. Now, j j don't be so Swedish. So just <laughs> put it up. Don't be so Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. you, I hear myself. In here. Um, so this question is related to, to taking this concept to other geographies and cultures, right? You, you touched upon Japan, and I find it amazing that 
that could actually work there based on my own experience with Japan, but <clears throat> that's good to hear. But uh, I work in an American company and I'm wondering about your experience with the US. Yeah. How, how does this work in, in the US? Yes, we're experimenting in uh, Minnesota. So we also have an, uh, an American company, uh, it's Bootsoch USA. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite a struggle with the American system, but I went to San Francisco a few months ago and there's now uh, a group f uh, also with uh, some authorities from San Francisco who want to experiment. And then we get the backup from top down and that will, I think, help more. Uh, but uh, I've, I've talked with senators and with a lot of people about the ARP uh, and uh, the American Association of Retired People. And they all think that this concept can contribute to the development therein. So, and we, f we try to find several ways to uh, learn about the American system and then try to find different small projects and then we'll see. So I, I also did a project before I started with Bootsog in the Ukraine on primary healthcare and that became national policy. And I think it's, it's uh, always uh, because you said about Japan, um, I think one of the, the main things is try to understand their language. Japanese is quite difficult, but uh, the nurse language in a lot of countries, countries is the same. So they say that what we are doing in, in Europe they experienced in the 80s also parts of it. So when I go back to things that which are logic for them, and then from the policy of the government in, in Japan, they said in 2025, we need to make a big shift from hospital care to the community. And it also works. So I'm also talking with the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Finance in Japan. So in, I try to connect all the time the system world to the daily practice. That helps question there and then down there and then all right so this sounds really interesting uh, say that a team of 12 really like working together could it self-manage and to be more than 12 or is it forbidden by policies no we, we just say if, if if you're happy and then you don't have problems you can go to 15 but the logic is that when you have more patients and you have more colleagues the coordination becomes more difficult. So some of these teams, um, they, they say we want to stay together because it, sometimes it feels like, um, like a divorce when they, they split up. So afterwards you see this same kind of problems as a bad, as a bad divorce. But they can, they're not very strict. We have some guidelines. So we said it's, and you will, you will experience that it, it becomes more difficult. Okay, I think uh, we. There was one down there as well, but. And then here. And then we'll see how many more we have time for, but let's keep it rolling. Let's see if I can. Yeah. Hello, my name is Anne Charlotte Breton. I work for the Swedish management organization. I mean, my colleagues have been interested in the sickness rate. I think it was four compared to seven. And you also mentioned something about um, work-life balance. Is that why it's quite high? Or is that just my interpretation? Can you explore <laughs> a little bit about uh, work-life balance? Oh, I, I think it influences. Uh, yes, I, I think what, um, uh, one, of, one of my concerns is all the time um, uh, the discussion about how to keep your own uh, borders. Um, clear because um, the, this, this engagement has another side. So 9.2 on engagement is that they are so motivated, they, they, they like um, saying no to patients, L like the, the teams are growing in the first years they were growing so fast and they don't, didn't want to say no. So some of them were working much more hours than, but I think more and more we learn how to deal with it uh, so we say use um, your 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 meetings your, uh, every month. Try to think about: Do you have enough colleagues to take care for the patients you have, and how to how to use your your hours? But I think there is a, there is a connection. Yeah. Thank you. I have a question over here. 
<coughs> I was wondering about uh, all the uh, as the com uh, sorry as the company grows, there's more and more questions that are in common. You've you've said, for example, that you decided to invest in an insurance uh, solution and and um, you've got your common common IT system. So who takes the decisions that's sort of common for everyone that's bigger than the unity? Um, the idea like the insurance company is, is, is an idea for different people f from different places in society. So I'm, uh, I'm also president of a foundation, it's called Holland is Flipping. Um, I work together with um, some different professors. Um, one is Jan Rotmans. And, and what we want to achieve is this, this movement to go beyond different sectors, industries or whatever. So, and, and one of these ideas, what came out of it is this uh, alternative um, in the health insurance. Um, a lot of uh, strategic decisions, um, they're not so many, but are made by, by me. But what we try to do now, we had an interesting discussion two weeks ago with, uh, with for example, with the coaches. And we said, how can we um, decide on, on a bit, a bit on different uh, subjects, but just some people together who are checking without my uh, active role in it. But, it. but during the growth and also keeping all the difficult things outside, there was a, quite a big role for me. And I want to reduce it now so i want to to uh, create a, a distributed ways of uh, decision making okay hey um y we'll meet you in the panel after lunch uh, you'll be here all day so uh, if you want to continue to to pick joss's brain in a sense uh, there's ample time to do that uh, thanks a lot uh, good luck in in uh, taiwan and with all the endeavors a big hand please Thank you.